It's the name that causes hearts just to swell with hope. <laughs> it's the name that still causes storms to stand down. It's the name that causes us to worship and adore. <laughs> it's a paradoxical name. I mean, he's a fierce and mighty warrior. And he's a bruised reed. He's a fierce and mighty warrior, and he comes dressed as a lamb. He's the king of glory, and he's our shepherd. The fear of that name is the beginning of wisdom, but it's his laughter that fills us with joy and pleasure. It's him. It's all about him. We're here today because of you. No one loves us like you do. No one believes in us like you do. No one cares for us like you do. No one loves us into a better life than you, and we're here for you. It's all about you. There is no other name. There is no other name. We exalt you. We magnify you. It's all about you. Yeah, there is no other name. So I want you just to stay in this place. Well, actually, I want you to move from this place. Tiffany, come on up. Tiffany has had some visions and some dreams, and uh, she wants to share one of them here, and it, it includes an activation that you need to respond to. So she, we would like you all to just come forward for just a moment. And Tiffany's going to uh, talk to you and then activate us. So. Awesome. So as you guys are coming to the front, I just want to share a dream I had on April 29th, three weeks ago from today. I had this dream that we were all together as a body, and as we began to come to church, there was a, a very tangible, real, crystal clear rainbow over the Vacaville Hills. And we just, we started to come into church, but it was almost like all the walls were clear, so all we could see was that rainbow. So together as a group, we started walking towards the Vacaville Hills, and as we got closer, that rainbow became tangible. And so I went to go touch it, and I grabbed a piece of it, and I said, I'm bringing this back for our church. And then every single person, all of us, all the community that was here, we just started going one by one and grabbing a piece of that rainbow and bringing it back with us to church. And then just um, a couple days ago, obviously it's a little unusual, the amount of rain that we've been having in May, but there was a rainbow over the Vacaville Hills. And I'm like, whoa, the timing of this, crazy. So I just started kind of processing with God, like what does this really mean? And he said that there's a time to where we hope and having hope for our promises is good and there's a season for that. But there's a posture switch that we need to have right now where we need to begin to contend and contest for our promises for our body and for your family, for your individual self. But there's a time where that posture just needs to shift and we need to say we're standing ground, every inch of ground, and we're saying we contend and we contest and we're grabbing a hold of our promise. We're not just standing in a posture of hope anymore, but we're saying it's happening. We declare it, we say yes, which means we need to stand in a posture of yes, Lord, whatever that means, whatever I need to do in my family, whatever we need to do as a body, we say yes to Jesus, yes to whatever you have for us. We say yes, Father, to all of the promises, everything you have for us. We stand in a posture of yes and amen for whatever you want for us in our body in Jesus' name. So, all right, so if you guys just want to grab a piece of that, whatever that is for you, for your family, maybe it's an individual promise, an individual hope. If it's for the body, just grab a piece of that promise. Just hold your hand out tangibly and just grab it and say, yes, Father, I receive this for my family. We receive this for our body, for this church, for our city. And grab a hold of that. Take just a minute. And then just even just grab a hold of someone next to you together in community and say, yes, we do this together. We are in this body together. We connect as a church family. And we say we stand for each other. And then we say yes and amen to this. Take a second to do that. And then you guys can go back to your seats. Take that promise with you. So everything is yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. So just go ahead and make your way back to your seats with your new promises.
Wow. Can you say wow? Wow. Amazing. Hey, listen, I just, uh, for many, uh, we have many visitors here. How many have been here with us and visiting for the last several days? Raise your hands, please. Around the room. We just want to say welcome to the mission. We're so glad you're here on a Sunday morning with us. So glad you're here. We've had people from South Africa. We've had people from the nation of Texas. <laughs> and listen, once a month here at the mission, we... We uh, have a focus of prayer. We call it the prayer focus. And uh, it's a play on words. But we focus our attention on some aspect of our community, of our surroundings, of what the, God, what the Lord's doing in the house. And from that, then we focus our attention in prayer for a 10-minute segment. So this is what we're going to do this morning. This morning, our prayer focus is about our campus that we have launched in the city of Davis. And so I would like everybody in the house that's from that uh, leadership team in Davis to please come forward and stand with us on the stage. We have several here now. Oh, hi, welcome. You guys are prophetic, aren't you? <laughs> Listen, the leadership team of that, uh, of that campus is amazing, and they're led by Gary and Carissa Hopkins. And they launched their, uh, they launched, we launched that campus about eight and a half months ago, and we thought it would be a great time to have an update from them about what God's doing in their city, what, uh, what's happening in their church, and in that region. So, Gary and Carissa, would you please come and fill us in? Well, we started like nine months ago, and we wanted to uh, definitely replicate the culture that we have here there. So, right away, we just went after developing a miracle supernatural culture, a culture based on presence, and a culture totally based on worship. Like here, you know, worship isn't just a prelude to the word. Worship is everything. We just take extended times of worship. It's not like we don't have anything else to do. We just don't have anything better to do <laughs> than just to worship. And so out of that out of that culture, we're seeing these testimonies that are so, we're seeing these testimonies that are so, so crazy. We had a woman bring a friend a few weeks ago who hadn't been to church in a while for various reasons. And during worship, she was just looking around, and then she heard her friend call her name. So she turned to her friend, but her friend was way over to the side worshiping, and so she's like. Well, that's weird. And so it happened again, and she's looking around, and it happened a third time. And so she started plugging into that voice, and the voice said to her, I'm so in love with you, and I'm so proud of you. And she just started weeping. And then her friend brought her up for prayer afterwards, and the, and the guy praying for her said, I just hear the Lord saying to you that he loves you so much, and he's so proud of you. And it was just like unbelievable. She's been back quite a few times since, so it's been awesome. <laughs> so just a couple of testimonies. We've had lots of healings, physical healings, emotional healings. We've had dance parties that broke uh, chains and addictions off. Um, we have a, a homeless, a uh, couple of homeless guys that come. They know that we serve snacks. One of our hashtags is come for Jesus and stay for snacks. And first he was coming just for the snacks, and now he's actually coming for Jesus. So that's awesome. Um, we have had, one of our physical healings was quite significant, came off of a word of knowledge. Um, and uh, the word was that, that the headaches were so severe that there was uh, not just nausea, but vomiting. And we had, um, actually, Ben Gonzalez right here, um, was actually three or four times a week was having those kind of headaches. And from that moment on, he has never had a headache again. So, so cool. Um, we bless our city every week that we're together. We bless our city. We pray for them. And the favor that we are shown in the city of Davis is unprecedented. Um, with the city officials, with our space, with the, the, even the money, the rent that we pay, it's just favor everywhere. And um, I know it's because of the prayers of this body and the prayers of our community. And um, it started with city prayer. 
that Tammy and Mark started. We have a couple that have been tenacious, probably about a year and a half now, that pray at City Hall, and that's what got us in the door. So I just, um, I'm so excited about what's happening in Davis. We covet your prayers, and uh, we meet at, on Saturdays at 6, and we are on Facebook Live, so you can join us there anytime. That's awesome. So Gary and Chris, as I was standing over here, I just felt like I heard the Lord say that in the next three months, there's going to be substantial breakthrough in prayer and, and, and some of the things you've been praying for and going after, not only at the church and in the city, but in your personal family. So you've been contending and contending, and you know what those things are. I don't know what those things are, but you know what those things are. So just... Put it on the calendar, mark it, and just watch and see what God's going to do in your community and in your personal families. So we just bless you with that in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, isn't God good? You know, he can just talk anywhere and anytime. But let's just have those ears that hear. And then let's have the heart that uh, responds to what we hear from the Father. So we're just going to pray. Can I have you guys all stand? Why don't you guys stand up close here, closer to the people, up to the front, and extend your hands. And we've, we've crafted a prayer for them that they can take home and pray over their community all the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for Gary and Carissa and all of the leadership team at the Mission Davis. We bless their vision their hard work, their love, and the growing community. We pray for complete health to their bodies, minds, and hearts, and that a river of refreshing would continually be poured out over each of them and their families. We declare abundant favor in the city that they already have, but more, Lord, more open doors, divine strategies, kingdom connections and relationships, creativity, and never-ending resources, never-ending resources to grow and fulfill their dreams and their destiny in Davis. We call in a permanent building for them to meet in and that it would be above and beyond what they could ever ask or think. We thank you ahead of time for the favor and great relationship they will have with the person renting the space. Open the doors, Father, and reveal their permanent home. We also call in the right people who have love and a passion to be youth and children's leaders. Prepare their hearts and hear the, to hear the call and to step forward now in Jesus' name. Thank you that Mission Davis shines bright in their community, and that they have favor in their city and with the students of UC Davis. Open up that campus. Open up that campus wide, Father. Begin to move on the hearts even now. Soften them. Prepare them. Cause them to be hungry and to start coming to Mission Davis, to be fed, to be ministered to, to be set free, and to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Let there be a revolution on the campus. Let everybody hear about it and just stampede to, to Mission Davis, Lord, to hear your word of truth, your kindness, and your goodness. We declare salvations, healings, and restoration. Open hearts and draw them by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Woo, so be it. Hug, hug one another and have a seat. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How you guys? I didn't worship my hair out. Hold on. <laughs> I promise I combed it before I left home. I just worshiped it out. <laughs> worship was good, right? Like, it wasn't just me. Like, worship was good. And I've been here since Wednesday. So I was like, whoo, I feel, I feel Jesus because I was rejuvenated. So I am, have the ultimate pleasure of welcoming the first-time visitors. Um, if you are a first-time visitor here at the mission, please raise your hand so that we can welcome you. And if you've been here since Wednesday, you are extra welcome, and you are extra blessed, and you are extra holy because I've been here with you. <laughs> My brother right here, we've been here since Wednesday. <laughs> 
So um, please keep your hand raised so a zone pastor can get you a bag. There's some candy in there. If you're not going to eat it, I'll be in the back. I'll eat it for you. Um, there's also a coupon for a free drink at the Rio Cafe. We do ask that you sign that Connect card. If you did not bring a pen, that is okay. We have an app that you can download and give us all that information. Whew. I'm about to faint. Like, y'all, like, I'm, I'm tipsy. Like, I, like it is, it's good, right? Like, just drink it up. Just drink it up. I just welcome you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And welcome. And I hand it off before I fall out. <laughs> so if you're uh, seventh through 12th graders, you are dismissed to your class out the West Gate with Nate out there. So you can head on out to your class. <clears throat> How you guys doing this morning? Doing well? Well, it's my privilege to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, the ways to give will be behind me there. Um, but it, <clears throat> I've been reading the story of um, after Jesus had um, died and resurrected, you know, his disciples went out to go fishing. And he shows up on the shore, and they had fished all night, and they hadn't caught anything. And so he, he yells out to them, hey, put your nets on the other side and you'll catch fish. So they did it. They catch a bunch of fish. And then they realize who he is. And, you know, Peter jumps in the water, goes. And then Jesus says, hey, go, go get some of your fish. And this is John 21, 11. It says, so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the nets was not torn. And so I just want to encourage you, obedience opens the door to the supernatural. Not only did they catch fish that they couldn't catch all night, but they caught so many that the nets should have torn, but they didn't. And when we're obedient to what God's telling us to do, the supernatural is opened, and we get to have nets that don't tear because it's overflowing with fish. So I just encourage you, just do what he's asking you to do in whatever it is. Just be obedient and see how miraculously he can work in you. So Jesus, we say thank you that you are the giver of our seed and our bread. And we thank you that you are such a generous God. And we just ask that you bless this offering today. And we also ask that you bless the giver today that you will overflow them with abundance and nets that will hold the abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. My name's Brittany, welcome to the mission, and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. We have got a lot going on around our church, so we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family, so check this out. This Father's Day is not one to be taken lightly. Chris Vallotton from Bethel Church in Reading will be speaking here at the mission. God is using Chris's prophetic voice to unravel mysteries and release revelation to the church and culture as well. You will want to be here and invite your friends too. Our senior community is dynamic and growing. Seniors serving seniors will meet the first Sunday each month at 9 a.m. in Gate 14 for refreshments and fellowship. We invite you to come and brainstorm ways to mobilize and meet the needs of seniors in your community. High Rise Youth Camp is rapidly approaching. Register your kids online ASAP so they don't miss out on this awesome getaway. Each day is designed with crazy group games, God encounters, and tubing on the lake. This tent camping experience for 7th to 12th grade students gets started on June 16th and ends on June 19th. We want your student to be a part of this summer's camp. Deeper's summer module begins on June 12th. This session on healing and wholeness will empower you to unlock your purpose and destiny to releasing the fullness of heaven on earth. For registration or more information, check out our website. Well, hey, thanks again for hanging out with us this weekend. If you have questions about anything you've heard today or just want to find out more about the church, visit our website at imissionchurch.com where you can register for events. You can also check us out on social media and on our Mission Vacaville app. And we hope you have a great day. Chris Vallott, and I don't know who he is. I just can't wait. It's going to be a great day. <laughs>
Hey, Dan, I want you to come on up here for just a moment. Would you welcome Dan? Dan McCollum. We've had just, you guys have had a great week yeah. of wonderful stuff. It needs to be yes. turned on. And uh, we just want to say thanks to some people. So Yes, yeah. absolutely. So we had uh, the School of Prophetic Trainers this week. How many of you were at the School of Trainers? Great to have you guys. Uh, from, I think, five nations and 21 states around the United States. It was great. And uh, then we had 50 volunteers from the mission that were serving you. Could I have everybody who volunteered uh, that is here stand up? I know some of some people are probably recovering. I think they're all in bed. But, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah. This yeah. couldn't have happened without you. And thank you, Regina, for coordinating all this. Yeah, and, Regina. Yeah. Come on. Come on, girl. Yeah. It's great. Honestly, the comment I heard most often was about the atmosphere of hospitality and love yeah. and, and openness, yeah. and, uh, and that's what you guys do and what you guys bring so powerfully, and we're so thankful for you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Yeah, what a great team. Hmm? I'm going to put that so it doesn't roll off somewhere. It's just what we need. How y'all, y'all Okay. I say y'all because we got some Texans here. We want the Texans to rise. Stand up, Texans. Got some guys coming from Troy Brewer's church there and outside of Dallas. Some over here. It's good. I always like to practice my foreign languages. <clears throat> yeah, come on. How many of you believe God is really as good as he says he is? His word says he is. He really is. I, I want to just... Uh, tell you a little bit about Deeper School. It's going to be this summer. It's, it's really a unique session we have this summer that you can take advantage of. It's on Wednesday nights, and we're going to be looking at healing and wholeness from uh, several perspectives. One is that we're going to be going through the biblical basis of healing, how to get results when you pray for, for the sick, uh, you know, just some of the healing models that are, that are potential out there. Uh, but we're also going to be having a, a session on a whole evening on <clears throat> tapping into the power of communion. It's going to be very, very powerful. The whole, the whole eight weeks is going to be great. And then we're going to be talking about living whole body, soul, and spirit. And if you can take advantage of this, I really encourage you to do it. It starts, uh, when does it start? It starts June 12th. Again, it's on Wednesday night for eight weeks. And uh, you can see Rick is going to be right back here. There's a table right back here, and you can, you can sign up for that. I really encourage it. And I want to want to ask uh, Ray Hurst to come on up here. Ray, why don't you come on up here? And I just put the mic away, didn't I? Right. Why don't you join us up here, Ray? Would you welcome Ray Hurst, please? <laughs> Ray has been a student in the school now for two years, the Wednesday night school for two years. And uh, I just thought it would be good, Ray, if you just share a little bit of what this has meant to you personally. Uh, how it's impacted your life, and, and would you think it'd be valuable enough for other people to participate? <laughs> that was a definite yes. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect when I, when I signed up for it. My wife had been encouraging me for a while. His um, wife, by the way, is, works in our finance department here at the church. She's amazing. Where, where's your wife? Is she here? She's there. Right, 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 right there we go. <laughs> Um, a little bit of my history, I was, uh, um, I went to Bible college for two years. Uh, we pastored for 11 and I don't, um, I don't down that college experience at all. I learned a lot, but after going to deeper, I realized that the two years prior was, um, was knowledge. It was just uh, scholarship. Good, good scholarship. Just scholarship. Yep. And I learned a lot about the Bible and such. Um, but deeper was totally different. It was, wasn't near as long. I mean, it was both two years, but, uh, the, my college experience, Bible college was, uh, four days a week, full time. And, uh, yeah. uh, but in just this, you know, three hours a night for two years, um, it was totally, totally changed me, what I knew of God, what I understand about God, 
Um, I wish I would have known it while we were pastors. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made a, a better difference, yeah. a bigger difference. Yeah. Um, and I'm it just there's there's concepts that I've had, concepts that I've had, but I never really understood. Yeah. And one of them was strengthening yourself in the Lord. Even uh, as a pastor, I didn't really understand it. Um, and I'm happy to say I understand it now. That's good. And that's, I've been that's having so some good. tough times at work lately, and I just stop and just spend five minutes, strengthen myself in the Lord. I carry my tools in my phone, <laughs> and good. it just makes a that's major good. difference in my life, and I yeah. hope my wife is noticing. I'm, hopefully I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that's better there, too, because I go home and complain to her a lot. Um, but I do strongly, strongly encourage it, whether you're a new Christian or one mm -hmm. that's been one for 50 years. It, it's not that much time, and Rick and Tara are amazing. Yeah, come on. I can't say enough about them. They carry such an anointing for this that it's, it's amazing. Rick, thank you. Tara, thank you, wherever you are. Um, so, Thank you, Rick. God welcome. bless you. Listen, I've got, I've got your certificate of completion here. Here you go. Would you congratulate him, please? Congratulations. God bless you, Rick. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, that's fun, huh? So take advantage of that. See Rick right in the back there. And uh, do your thing. All right. Here we go. I think I've taken care of all of that. All right. I want to I share just a quick thought, and we'll come back to it. Oh, dear Jesus. Um, it's going to have to be a quick thought, isn't it? All right, I'm going to try something here. Uh, put your hands like this. Now lock your fingers like this. Turn it upside. There's the, no. no. <laughs> Keep your hands like this. <laughs> Just keep them there. There is no space between his presence and him. I'm going to say that again. There is no distance, no space, no molecule of space, no atom of space between him and his presence. And the reason I say that is I, I, I'm beginning to get some revelation about this whole idea of him being with us and recognizing that there are moments that I have brought a separation. I have allowed a mindset at times where we, we disconnect his presence and him as if he's out here and he sins in his presence we talk about the presence, right? And I don't want to stop talking like that. I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we necessarily change our language, but we change our understanding. I, I'm, I'm not standing here alone. When you felt the presence, it was him. It was him. It is him. You're not sitting there alone, and it has nothing to do with the person that you see in the flesh sitting next to you. He said, I will be with you always. There is, say it with me, there is no distance between his presence and him. They are one and the same. So say, welcome, Jesus. You're right here. Okay, we're going to come back to that. I'm asking the Lord for an acceleration here this morning. <laughs> you know, if, if he can stop the sun, maybe he can stop the clock. I don't know. So I want to, I want to, uh, I'm going to try to very quickly tell you four stories out of the Old Testament. Uh, well, we won't turn there because of time. We won't read these. But the first one is found in Deuteronomy chapter 31, and it's Moses when he's talking to the nation of Israel. Now, Moses lived a very full life, wouldn't you say? 
born in Pharaoh, uh, born and then found himself in Pharaoh's household, was raised there, spent 40 years in that, and then escaped into the wilderness, and there spent 40 years taking care of his father-in-law's sheep, ran into a, a bush. It was unusual. The voice of God spoke to him. He went to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, got them out of Egypt, had a tough time getting Egypt out of them, right? So the next 40 years, because they refused to go into the promised land, he spent another 40 years with a generation dying and another generation waiting for those to die, right? There, was, there were all these, all these young people being raised up, and they're all going, when are they going to go away, right? Because once they go away, then we can go into the promised land. So now, that, now he is 120 years old. He's done a lot of living, and the one thing he, he wants these people to know is don't do what we did, right? Don't make the same mistakes. So he gathers the people together, and he, and he says to them something that would be critical for them moving into the new season that they were in. They've now spent 40 years in the wilderness, and now they're going to go into the promised land, a new season for them, and he says to them a word, he gives them an instruction that would be essential to them moving into their new season. Story number one. In Joshua chapter one, we see that Moses is now dead. God comes to Joshua and he says, Moses, my servant is dead and you're now going to take these into the promised land. This was a new time for Joshua. This was a time when he was now going to go in and possess a land that they had given up on 40 years before. And he was to lead the children of Israel. Big responsibility, big task in front of him. It was now to possess new territory that had once been abandoned by the people he's leading. He, he's come to understand the nature of the people of Israel. He's been with Moses as Moses walked, watched the rebellion of the people, the stiff naked, 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 the stiff. <laughs> Those people. And now he's, now he's given a task. He's given this place where he has given an instruction to complete a mission that is once abandoned. And so he, he now faces all of this, and God comes to him, and God gives him an instruction. And it's the same instruction that Moses spoke to the children of Israel about going in and taking the land. Stepping into their new season, Moses had said one thing. Joshua is now getting ready to take on a responsibility that he'd never had before. He's now getting ready to take on a mission and God comes and speaks the same words to Joshua, and he does it three times in one chapter. The same words. S story number two. Story number three, found in 1 Chronicles chapter 19. David is now king. And uh, the king of Ammon dies. And David loved the king of Ammon. The king of Ammon had had favored him and protected him during the days when David was running from Saul. And so when the king dies, David wants to pay tribute to that king by going and comforting the king's son, who is now going to be the king. His name is Hanan. So David sends some emissaries to the king. And in sending the emissaries, he wants them to go and comfort the king and support the king in this transition. How many of you know transitions are not easy? And so David understands that, and he sends these emissaries just to support him to show his love for the king that has passed away. So King Hanum receives them, but his, his advisors say to him, you know, David has done this because he wants to take over our kingdom. He has done this because he wants to spy our land so that he can take it over, and King Hanan believes them. And because he believes them, he takes those men that have come to bless him and he shames them and he dishonors them by cutting their beard and cutting off their clothes just below the waist so that they are now walking around naked from the waist down. And he sends them back to David. Now he knows when David sees them, he's going to be a little ticked off. 
You know? So Hanan decides he hires 22,000 chariots from Syria and men to, to man those chariots. You imagine, 22,000. And he comes against Israel. David hears of this and he gathers Joab, his general, and the mighty men, and he sends them to face the Ammonites and the Syrians. But when he faces those, he realizes, Joab realizes that he is outnumbered and outgunned. That as he, so he gathers the troops together and he gives them an instruction that would give them the advantage in an uneven battle. And it's the same instruction that Moses gave to Israel. The same instruction that God gave to Joshua. And he gives them that instruction and the nation of Israel is victorious in their battle. Last story, 1 Chronicles chapter 28. David is now an old man. He's ruled for 40 years in Israel. He's killed his giants. He's had personal successes, personal failures, had national successes and national failures. He's known loyalty and he's known betrayal. He's an old man about to die. And he wants desperately to leave a legacy and that legacy is to build the temple of the Lord. So he gathers all the leaders together and he brings his son Solomon into those gathering because Solomon would be the one that would be king after David's death. And he tells a story that Solomon has heard probably 150 times as he grew up in the household of David. And it's just simply that it was in my heart to build the temple of the Lord. But the Lord said, no, I've been a man of war and a man of blood. But he has allowed me to design the temple. He has allowed me to gather all the materials together. And as he's giving this speech, he then turns to Solomon. And, and, he, and he says to Solomon, as for you, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart. He then turns to the table where all of the, all of the blueprints for the temple are there. And he picks up the blueprint. He turns to his son Solomon. He lays the blueprints in Solomon's hands. Can you imagine the weight the emotional weight of those blueprints in Solomon's hands. And David looks in the eyes of his son and he gives him an instruction. It's the same instruction that Moses gave to the people of Israel, the same instruction that God said to Joshua, the same instruction that Joab said to the troops, the very same. It's the same instruction used, using two Hebrew words used 2,847 times in the Old Testament. In fact, the same instruction is spoken 11 times in the Old Testament in different situations. And in the four stories I've just told you or referred to was the instruction that would allow them to, one, for Israel to step into a new season, for Joshua to take new territory, for Joab to gain victory against all odds, and for Solomon to fulfill the task beyond his ability. Any of you in any of those places? You got, you got, you're stepping into a new season. You're not sure what it's going to look like. You're not sure what it's going to take. Joash taking new territory. How many of you feel like you have new territory? You like prophetic words. I mean, come on, this has been a whole week of prophetic words. How many of you have prophetic words that you, you need to take hold of that's new territory for you? And listen, you know, this week, Dan is the greatest trainer in the universe, outside of Holy Spirit, right? And his team this week have done a great job of empowering the prophetic words in you and, and training you in those things. But come on, let's be honest, when you get through with all of that, you go, wow, what do we do now? It's overwhelming, isn't it? Maybe you have, you know, a victory you need, an enemy that faces you that's, you know, it's against all odds that you're going to win this one. It doesn't look good in the natural. Anybody here? Yeah. And Solomon, who, who needs it, has got a task now as a young man, and he's got to, got to build this temple that is designed by God to house God. Come on. He has a task it's beyond his ability. But the instruction for all of them was the same. The instruction for us this morning is the same. 
What's that instruction? Come next week, and I will tell you. <laughs> Some of you have already guessed. You already know. Can anybody tell me? Be strong and of good courage. He says it every time. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Paul would kind of echo those words in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's not an Old Testament thing. It's a kingdom thing. Be strong and of good courage. Simply stated, strength and courage are the willingness to take hold of a thing and to never let go. That's essentially what it means. Take hold of a thing, being willing to go after something, grab hold of it, and then not ever let it go. Be strong and of good courage. Have strength and courage. I made a list 15 years ago. Uh, for some of you, that's like, you know, when you were five. But 15 years ago, to me, like is day before yesterday, right? But I refer to this from time to time to remind myself. It takes strength and courage. I want to give you this list very, very quickly. There's like 23 things. I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, quickly. Not a, not a pastor's quickly. Not a speaker's quickly, just a quickly. Like the real thing. And in a minute, I'll get to it. But we are like the Lord. A moment is a thousand years. And so here we go. And I remind myself of these things, that I need strength and courage to try. The greatest mistake we make in life is to be continually fearing that we're going to fail and that we're going to make a mistake. But to try, to fail, we need courage we need strength to fail. We need courage and strength to rebound from failure. To succeed, we need that. We need it to face our fears. We need it to dream big dreams and follow those dreams. We need it to pray big prayers. We need those things to believe God, to change. I like what a guy by the name of Andre said, man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. We need strength and courage to do that. We need strength and courage to stay the course, to, turn, to trust the unseen, to live supernaturally, to receive from God, to be generous givers, to speak the truth in love, to confront, to love, to trust, to obey, to live, to right the wrong, to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, and to fight for the benefit of others. We need strength and courage. Without that, nothing works. Nothing happens. You with me? Now, it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> right? So how do I do that? I, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'll be strong. I'll be courageous. I'll be courageous. How many of you have, that's worked? Like, right? No, it doesn't. I was going to be it. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be courageous. That's just like the, the nation, the, the army of Israel going against Goliath. They go out there and they make their battle cry. And then Goliath shows up and they run. For almost 80 times they do that over a 40-day period. We're like, kind of like that. We get, in, we get in a worship service like this morning and we're just like, yes, yes yeah, yeah, but this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Ah. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? I'm right. So it's not just stealing ourselves, you know, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. But in every one of those things, every one of those stories I quoted this morning, where, where God instructs his people to be strong and of good courage, there is an answer to how that happens. In every one of these, there's a key, and it's simply this. If you overlook it, your strength will fail, your courage will fail. And it's simply this. It's the reality of God with us. In every one of those stories, 
Be strong and of good courageous, for the Lord your God is with you. That's the key. It's having a real sense, a real acknowledgement of the one who is not separate from his presence. The one who is right now here standing with me on this platform. Sometimes he's here to laugh at me. I get it. Because he loves us to just try. But he's always here. Everything that God is is always present and available to us. Because he is here. So then we go into the New Testament and we see a similar story. And we referred to this a couple of weeks ago that it's in Matthew chapter 28. And Jesus is giving them the instructions. We call it the Great Commission, right? But you, do you understand what he's asking of them? He's asking of them to go into a culture that is absolutely contrary to what he's telling them to do. He's telling them, you're going to go in there and you have no chance. It's impossible. I love what Daniel says every once in a while. You know, Christianity is not supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be impossible. And he's telling them, I want you to go in there and go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. He's saying, go do the impossible. How are you going to do it? Oh, oh let's, don't forget this. I am with you always. I am with you always. How are we going to be strong and courageous? It's living in the reality that he is right here. That there is no separation between his presence and him, and there is no separation between him and me. What, Paul says? What? Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Why does he have to say that to believers? Because we disconnect from the reality of his presence. It doesn't mean that God leaves us. We don't disconnect from God, but we, we disconnect from the awareness and the acknowledgement that he's right here. He's right here and right now. I'm convinced that it's the awareness and acknowledgement of his presence that fuels our strength and courage. When you realize who's with you, you can walk into a room where you cannot win and you win. You walk into a new season where you're, you don't know what's about to happen. You don't know if you're the person that can make it through that new season, and you not only make it through, you thrive in that new season. Are you still with me? Our level of the reality of his presence determines the level of strength and courage we function in. I shared a couple, few weeks ago an experience I had on the airplane coming home from, from the Philippines. I was going to share it in a brief way just for a moment for those who are not here and those of you who have already forgotten. <laughs> I was flying home from the Philippines. I was about four hours into the trip and, and I, I woke up with this absolute knowledge, reality, that someone had traveled, somebody had traveled with me, some person had traveled with me and they were sitting in the seat across the aisle from me. And it was real. I, I knew they were there. And um, I had this phenomenal contentment in that moment, just like, oh, I'm so glad somebody, I, I said it to myself, I'm so glad somebody came with me on this trip. I travel a lot, as some of you do. I travel a lot by myself, especially on some of these long flights overseas. And it was just this abs just sense of warmth and contentment and peace that settled over me because somebody had come with me. So I got up and I walked around a little bit and I thought, I'm going to go say hi to this person over in that seat. Got over and looked at him and I didn't know him. There was nobody I knew. I thought, I'm delusional. Too many flights like this. Too many times in an airplane. It's finally caught up with me. I've gone crazy. I sat back down and I said, God, what is that? He just said, it's me. It's me. I'm with you always. I want to tell you what that's done to me. It's really changed my world. So now I live with this, this thing where my thoughts are constantly challenged 
to fall in line with what God thinks. Now, I've, heard, I've heard Bill say this, you know, I have no right to think something about myself that God does not think about me. That's becoming reality to me. And even thinking not just about myself, but about what's going on around me and what's happening in people's lives. I, I, it's just all is falling back in line because I, I'm, I'm walking with him. See, if we, if we allow this kind of disconnection, then we can trust wholly in ourselves. Right? But it's like, you know, Deb and I, we've lived together now 47, it'll be 48 years in just a few months. W- would you stand up, Deb? Would you please stand up? <laughs> yeah. No, no, stay, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. No, stand up. Oh, you are standing up. Okay. <laughs> turn, turn around. Let everybody see your face. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> That's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> but we, we live together. You know, when, we, when we're walking together, when we're, there, there's always the influence of how I think that comes from her, how she thinks that comes from me. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Because we, it's so real. When we live with God in that same way of realness, then our thinking comes into alignment with how he thinks. Now, it's a journey, right? It's a journey. I've been in times in the last couple of weeks where I'm going, and I go, oh, wait a minute, oh, oh sorry. Because you're right here. You hear me. You hear my grumbling, my complaining. You hear my fear. You hear all of that. You know, living in that kind of awareness changes our thinking and brings us into, into alignment with how God thinks. My actions are, are challenged to reflect the nature and character of the one who is with me. And it's not that I'm afraid. Isn't that right? That's right. right. It's just, we are possessed and we do hear voices, right? Uh, I'm going to get in trouble. It's not like there's a, and this is the glorious thing about that, there's no condemnation. Even when I recognize my actions or my thinking are not in line with who he is and what he wants for me, there's no, there's actually a joy. Oh yeah, I get that now. Listen, I've I've known the Lord, I, I can't remember a time I didn't know Jesus. I slept under more chairs in churches my whole life. I'm a prenatal church attender. (laughs) But more than that, I knew Jesus. But there's always an upgrade that we can have in this. So my fears are now bowing to the love that my companion has for me. Anxiety yields to the joy that he is, right? My worship has deepened. I can't tell you what that's been like. Just a whole new, little, new level of worshiping with him, worshiping him with him. Turn to somebody and say, he's really not off his rocker. He's, he's okay. He's okay. He'll, he's not going to get any better, but he's good. That's not going to change. And prayer has taken a new level, too. And I love Dan, I really encourage you to get Dan's message from last night. Just an amazing practical message on the presence of God and walking with God and just doing things with God. Uh, I really encourage you. But Dan, I said last night that it's not about a prayer life, but a life of prayer. And uh, it's becoming, you know, I've, I've always had times of that, times of that. But now I'm saying, God, you know, you're, if you're with me right now, then I, I, uh, I just want to be in constant communion. And it's not work. It's just constant awareness. It's constantly acknowledging. You know, that's why, why uh, Proverbs says, acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him, acknowledge him, acknowledge him in all your ways, all your times. So 
So who, who can, could use some strength and courage for the new season? How about if you could take, you have some new territory to take, you need some strength, you need some courage. Or you've got something you're facing that you recognize in your own strength, you will never, you will never succeed. Or you have a task that's beyond your ability. Could be a prophetic word. Man, I've got some prophetic words. I'm going, God, you have made, you have made the wrong choice. <laughs> right? It's one of the things he's trying to fix in me. Okay? So if any, any of those four things, would you stand up if any of those things are there? Because I, I, I'm not going to pray for strength and courage. I want to pray for a fresh uh, minister, uh, worship team. Come on up. Oh, you're up. Oh, my goodness. Jesus is with you, too, I can tell. I'm going to pray for fresh encounter that you grab hold of and not let go of. Of the manifest reality of the manifest presence of God that's with you right now. No matter what you're walking through, no matter what the challenge is in front of you, no matter what season you're stepping into, he's there. And everything that he is is available to you. So I'm going to pray for that. But I want us, I want us together to pray a prayer that Ryan used a few weeks ago on St. Patrick's Day that I just think is so powerful. I, I've been praying this prayer almost every day since that experience on the plane because it just, it just helps me visualize the nearness of God. So if, guys, if you'll put that up on, on the screen there. This is a part of St. Patrick's prayer. It's a much bigger, bigger thing, but this is the piece that to me is, is, is really connecting with me. So I want us in just a moment to pray over the, pray this together out loud as a declaration that this is our reality. So close your eyes. I want you in your own way right now to connect to the one who is with you. We are a lover of his presence, but we're a lover of him. And there's no disconnect between the two. So in your own words, own way right now, just connect with the one who is in you and with you. Okay, if you'll open your eyes. Let's make this a declaration now, and then we're going to pray in some very specific ways according to this prayer. So you ready? You ready? Here we go. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right. Christ on my left. Christ when I lay down. Christ when I sit down. Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. Now leave that part up there. Here's what I want us to do. I want you to put your hand on your heart. Lord, awaken our heart to the reality of your presence, of you right here, right now. Awaken our heart that causes our mind to change, to think differently, to live in a fresh awareness no matter what the circumstances. Turn, turn our heart on. Turn it on, Lord. Turn on the awareness. Flip the switch in our heart right now in Jesus name put your hands on your mind
God, give us the mind of Christ. That our, think, our thinking falls in line. Our mindsets fall in line to the one who is with us. Let our mind even begin so overwhelmed. Let it be so transformed. And that our thinking is always about you here now. You with us. Bind us to the mind of Christ. Bind us to the mind of Christ. Put your hands on your mouth. God, let our mouth be that which only honors you. That our words, our words be in line with who you are. Our words be in line with your character, your nature. That our words for one another be always in line for how you see them. Lord, that we not see each other in the, according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Let our mouth, let our mouth be sealed for your glory. Set aside for your glory and your praises and the encouragement of the people around us. Now put your hands on your eyes. Listen, I just, I just re remembered we were in, keep your hands on your eyes and just pray for yourself. Yeah. Just get, get awashed in the spirit right now. But I want to share a story because I, I think this could happen right now. Um, we were in Minnesota and we were in a group of students and we were praying for eyes and there was a group that was praying for something else over here. Deb was praying with everybody over here. And I just had everybody put their hands on their eyes and pray to see things that they'd never seen before to, you know, to all of that. A woman over here starts screaming. And we thought something terrible had happened. But what had happened is she had taken off her glasses while they were praying for her. They put, she put her glasses back on and she couldn't see with her glasses. It scared her. And then she realized the reason she couldn't see with her glasses because her eyes had been healed. And she took off her glasses and she could see perfectly. And it's just because we, we just pray for the eyes. So I just, I pray for that right now in this room, that that would take place. So if you wear glasses, take your glasses off. Put your hands on your eyes. And God, we pray that we would see as you have called us to see. That we would be those that sees you. It's like, it's the, it's, the, it's the big picture in everything. It's the, it's the one that hangs on the wall of our personal guardian place where we, we just see everything. Let, let that be you that we see. Give us fresh vision to see what you're doing. But more than that, to just see you. And we pray for healing in eyes right now. God, you are the healer. You're here. So we pray for healing in the eyes right now, that you would bring sight where there's, where there's, uh, where there's uh, fuzziness and bring sight where there's blindness and there's, there's specks that shouldn't be there and there's, there's vision that's, that's not right. We just pray for that to be a sign and a wonder, a sign and a wonder for us now in Jesus' name. Thank you. You are our healer. We take that now. But more than anything else, give us eyes to see you. Give us eyes to see you. Now put your hands on your ear. You would be Christ in every hear, ear that hears me, hears you, Lord. We want to hear you. We want to hear you above all the din and the noise and the, just the chaos of our world. We want to hear you above the logic of man. We want to hear you above the reason, the reasonableness of man. We want to hear your voice and hear it plainly. So give us ears to hear. Give us, come on, you guys can pray too, come on. Just give us ears to hear. Give us ears to hear. Eyes to see, a mind to respond, to only think of the thoughts that you have. A heart to respond. Lord, that just 
tuned into you in every way. In Jesus' name. Now, let's say this prayer again. Go back to the first slide. You ready? To pray it from a new reality. Here it is. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right. Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down. Christ when I sit down. Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of every man thinks of me. This is, this is he, him talking, okay? Let's look at it from that. He's talking this. He's bringing this in us. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. That's me. Christ in every eye that sees me. That's me. Christ in every ear that hears me. That's me now. Let's do it again. Christ in the heart. Ready? You're going to go, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. And you're going to say, that's me. Are you getting this? All right? So you're going to declare that you're now becoming this because you've prayed this. You've asked him for that. So here we go. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. That's me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. That's me. Christ in every eye that sees me. That's me. Christ in every ear that hears me. That's me. Come on. Come on. So, Father, I pray over every one of us right now. Because you're right here and you've heard our voices. You've heard the declarations of our heart. You've heard the desires of our heart. (laughs) We refuse to ever believe again that there's any distance between your presence and you. We refuse to believe that. And there's no distance between you and me. Say that. There's no distance between you, God, and me. Say that one more time until you mean it. There's no distance. That's right. Say it again. There's no distance between you, God, and me. (laughs) There's no distance. There's no distance. And he doesn't leave you anytime, even when you fail. Right? Right? No matter where you go, whether you're right or wrong, he doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. It simply means he doesn't, he doesn't abandon you. He doesn't pull himself away from you. And he will never withdraw his aid from you. So there we are. Are you glad? Are you glad? Are you glad? Okay. I'd like the ministry team to go ahead and come forward. We want to pray for those that need healing, those that need somebody to agree with him. This is the wonderful thing about the presence of God, isn't it? He said, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of him. It doesn't mean that he's not with us when, when it's not two or three. It's just that there's a unique presence. There's a unique working of the Holy Spirit when we all come together in his name. And he's caused us to need each other, too. Aren't you glad? We need each other. So if you need prayer this morning, in just a moment, we're going to dismiss you. You come on down and be prayed for. These people have just come prepared every Sunday morning to pray and see miracles happen. We want to th- we're just wel- welcome all of those that have come for the conference this week. Thanks for being with us today. We just pray for a great, great thing to happen in your life. Is, is there some going on? No? Okay. All right. Well, blessings on you. Have a great day in the Lord. Again, if you want prayer, just come on down right now. If you have kids in the children's ministry, go please go get your kids and rescue our workers. I'm a lover of you, Jesus. And it's all I want to be.